Hello, welcome to Jackie Burns Creations. I am doing Springtime in Paris. It is called Meet Me in Paris with our co-host, Sarah from Sunflowers and Sunshine and Brenda from Moner's Market. I have inserted a few of my pictures from my recent trip to Paris. And here we go with DIY number one. I've been wanting to do this, recover this chair for a while. As you can see, that material is probably from about a good 10 years ago when the iCat was really popular. And of course, what better way to do it than to do it in a Parisian look. So this is like some homespun type material that uh, I got from a store in Utah. And I'm laying down the chair seat. These are, chair seats are like the easiest thing to ever recover. And what you need is you need material, scissors, a staple gun, and a stencil if you're going to stencil it. If not, just your material and a staple gun and scissors. So I'm cutting around the chair seat, leaving quite a few inches around each side. And since this has stripes, I need to line up the stripes. And I've got a great stencil that I bought at Michael's quite a few years ago. I did a stool for my friend in this last year. Or maybe it was the year before, but it came out very cute. So I mean, this is totally Parisian. Everything Paris about it. Words, the Eiffel Tower, everything. So I've got a really dark navy type blue that I put down. I put it on a paper plate so I can tamp it. And then I've got a napkin there so I can tamp it again. And I like to stipple with doing a stencil. I don't like to swirl because the swirl seems to get the... I should have put tape on it, but I didn't. It's always best to tape down your sides and it holds it in place. But anyway, I uh, offload. I decided now that I was dumb doing it right on the stool. So I'm just going to put it back and line it up as best as I can. They're pretty easy to line up. Now I'll just stencil the rest of it. But anyway, it's easy when you're swirled to get paint underneath the stencil. But this is a nice heavy-duty stencil. See, I should have put tape on it. But it's pretty easy to move it back in place. And so I'm making, looking for where the screw holes are, and I'm just making them a little deeper. And I'm taking a marker and marking it so I can see it easily when I'm looking through the other fabric or looking underneath. So I am lining it up. And the stripes in this are really, really navy blue, so I can match it really easy. And I see on each end I need to line it up a little bit better. Okay, I am taking the staple gun. It's best if you press on top and you get the staples in there really well. So one side you just staple. Now the next side you're going to pull more tight, more taunt. You can do it with a hand staple gun too. Not with a desk staple gun though. And 
those because I was pulling it tight, they didn't go in quite as well. So what I did was I just took my hammer and gave them a good whack. Now I am working on some corners. You can't see it, sorry. But I think the next corners you can see when I do it. So you can see I'm just kind of folding them down like a bed corner. Pulling that a little tight. And I'm just going to give them all a good whack to make sure. And there you've got it. Now I'm just peeking under the edge to see where the... I'm just poking a little hole in where it is. And I'm just going to put a mark where each one is. Just trying to line it up. And then when I put the seat cover on, I'll turn it over and screw the screws in from the bottom. And they go up from the chair to the seat cover. A few more staples in it. Just give it a few more marks. And here it is. Just going to drop it into place. Oh, and to set it, I didn't show you, but to set the stencil, you just take a warm iron and go over it with a warm iron. And that will set the paint on there for you. Okay, DIY number two. I took some of the fabric that was left over. And I am going to do some stamps. I have these two planters that I uh, got a long time ago that are sufficiently aged and some rust and everything on them and just, just perfect. They have succulents in them. And they had paper labels. And over time, the paper labels just maybe got wet with watering or whatever and just fell off. So I was thinking, they look pretty ugly. I need to do something with them. So these are the new IOD stamps from Iron Orchid Designs. I think they're very cute. They've got a lot that look so Paris on there. A lot that look fairly English, too. But they're great. Anyway, I have a stamp pad. It's not my... IOD stamp, but it's another one I got from Michael's. So what I need to do is, since this is brand new, I need to condition these uh, stamps. So I turned them over and I'm just taking a finer grit sanding sponge and just going each over each one so they accept the ink much better. Gives them a little rough surface to hold the ink. And I pulled out this little cute pig one. And I'm going to stamp it. Now you tell me it says this was ebony. This ink does not look ebony to me. It looks more a blue or a greenish color. So 
So what you do is lay it down, hold it with one hand always, and go around and use your fingers or your hands to get your picture on there. Well, that does not look ebony. It almost looks even gray. But it works. Just wiping off my stamp. If you keep them clean, then they keep their sharpness. Okay, the next one. Trying to see which one I like the best. There was a rooster. And I thought, okay, the pig and the rooster go together quite nicely. And they look very French farmhouse. Well, getting plenty of ink on there. And here I am holding it down again and just pressing every area with my fingers. Now I am trimming these because I want to put a fringe on them. So you just start pulling threads. And then you can see after the threads are pulled out, you can see where you need to trim it up, where the threads are longer and where they're shorter and what you need to do with it. Looks cute with a little fringe around it. See, I'm just evening those out. Looks cute. Oh, there I go with the other one. Now what I'm doing is I'm putting liquid patina on the pot. The dog had to come over and see what I'm doing and she got some liquid patina on her nose. So my son went and washed her off after he got done filming. So now I'm just going over the top and it will dry very stiff and be stuck on there very nicely. And it looks cute. You can see where one of those labels was. Just with your brush, you can make sure that your fringe is nice on top, sticking out in the right directions. Okay, DIY number three. Now this one is really quite Paris-like. It's a little glam, but IOD. I got these uh, transfers, and I put all these French advertising transfers on this round. This round was painted white. I 
Oh, and stick around because I have a cute little video for you at the end. I'm going to show you my lip, lip on. Lip in, lip in, lip on, lip in. Or lap in. Could be lap in. I don't speak French. I actually can read a little bit, but I don't speak French. But I love France. I love Paris. I could go back and back and back. And I just had my third trip in November. Love it. Started at the south of France and worked our way up on a ship and then got on a train and went to Paris for three days. And my friend had never been there, so we had a great time. The food was wonderful. The people were wonderful. And if you would like, I have a video that I could put up of little clips of my trip to Paris. Just let me know if you're interested. Someone said I should make a vlog with my trips that I do. So let me know if that's interesting to you. Okay, so I'm getting all these around and I am using the stick to push them on. And what I need to do is I need to get a little corner up so I can work it work it and I like I don't know why I always like to go from the left side to lift it but as I'm working it I lift it from the left side and I can see if I need to put it down and uh, rub it again so I'm rubbing it with my fingers a little bit and then I go back and burnish it with the paper and now I'm using the DIY liquid patina it's put out by Debbie's Designs, and it's it's lighter than the Mod Podge, but it still works great. Now I'm painting the second round white. You're going, what in the world is she doing with all these rounds? Okay, now I'm putting handles on the top of this. The screws are too long, so I'm going to put some wood glue, and I hope they hold. It should. It's Gorilla Wood Glue. Wood glue's pretty tough, especially Gorilla. You know, I'm just putting them where they're even. They kept sliding, so I had to put these little boxes in place. Now I'm putting some... on the top of the second round. And I had to sit here for a little bit to make sure they didn't slide all over the place. Because you know how these rounds are never really that stable. They always have, seem to have a little curve in them. So I'm putting on plenty of wood glue. And I think with easy use this will work. If it doesn't, I'll try some other kind of glue. I was trying to think what other kind of glue would do it. Because hot glue certainly wouldn't. I'm putting the one round on the top and lining them up. And aren't those advertisements, aren't those cute? Most of them were about perfume. And if you're new here, go ahead and subscribe if you like what you saw. I would appreciate it trying to get to 3,000. Thank you for watching. 
hit that red button. Now here's my little video for you. Moi, le pon. Le pin. This is my bunny, Nutmeg. And I'm showing you just a cute little picture of that goofball. Look how he just picks up these little cups and throws them around because they were new and he didn't like them. And so he had to try to move them away from his food. He didn't, they don't like things stacked up. I don't know what it is about bunnies. And if you've got a bunny, let me know. They are hilarious. They are so funny. He's just a little character. So he's still well, you messing with those cups. You don't want your dinner? And where did you where go, you Nutmeg? Oh, there he is. Where are you going? Come on. Come and get your dinner. You have to keep his gate up. Come he has a bedroom to himself and a bathroom Come to on. himself. But we keep oh, the gate up so, so when the grand dogs are here. Hey, Nutmeg. Hi. That they can't get at him. Oh. Because we don't know what would happen. The, he's moving his food. He just did not like these by his food. But he's had a great time since then throwing them around. Okay, we'll go and let you eat. Bye, Nutmeg. Okay, here we are all finished. He's showing you the chair. I think it looks great. He's showing you the pretty chair I put it on. It's got roses carved at the top of it. It's kind of a vintage chair. And doesn't it go good on there? Love it. And here are the planters. With the pig. And the rooster. Can't see the rooster quite as well. But it still looks cool. You see, they don't look ebony, do they? But I kind of like that faded look. And I really like the fringe around the edge. Now here's the tray. And you can see I put the uh, knobs on the bottom for feet also. And I think this will be gorgeous in my bedroom. Nice little trinket tray or riser display tray. And it's very lightweight. And you could also put things underneath the hair like bracelets or earrings or something. There are the gorgeous knobs with all the transfers. And I certainly am thankful to see you all. Bye for now.